Yeah. Okay, it was at a very disappointing 24 hours on the roads, as you'd be aware, last night in a five hour period, we had three significant incidents um, in Metro Adelaide and on the freeway. Um, you're probably all aware of what they are, I'll just go through them individually. So about 7pm last night in um, uh, Croydon Park, Ford Mustang was driving in a dangerous manner um, and has tried to overtake another Mazda and had a collision with that car and it ended up on its roof. Um, luckily no one was um, seriously injured, there were some minor injuries um, and the driver of that car was uninjured and um, he ended up returning a positive alcohol test and was subsequently reported for driving with a prescribed concentration of alcohol and that's uh, drink driving. Um, he was issued with a six month uh, loss of licence um, and uh, his, the, the car wasn't impounded because it was so badly damaged it was actually crashed over. And then about an hour later, we've had a Honda motorcycle allegedly travelling at a speed of 155 kilometres an hour in a 110 zone. Uh, it was tracked by police initially, um, but wasn't pursued due to the speed and obviously um, motorcycles being a vulnerable vehicle. It was tracked using uh, traffic cameras through the Hyacinth Tunnel, um, doing 100 k's, and it was actually limited in there to 40 kilometres an hour because of the roadworks. Um, he was then tracked to, with the cameras to a service station and subsequently um, caught up with by police uh, which revealed that he had an expired licence and um, was drug tested and returned positive for methamphetamine. A search also found in possession of drugs, uh, suspected to be methamphetamine and uh, fancy. Uh, he was also reported for uh, serious uh, driving offences including excessive speed, speed, speed dangerous, manner dangerous and expired licence and possession of a controlled drug. Um, his vehicle was uh, impounded for 28 days and received an instant loss of licence for a year. And then uh, just to, uh, before midnight, about 11.50, now Polly was up doing some proactive flying and um, whilst the search of that area uh, came across a vehicle of interest, a green BMW in the um, Laverne Street, Athol Park. Uh, they tracked that vehicle down Grand Junction Road at speeds of 120 k's in the 60 zone. Uh, that was eventually tracked to Eagle Court in Semaphore Park, uh, where the vehicle was dumped and the driver ran off. And um, the poly has still kept observations on that person and uh, cordoned up the area and uh, located and arrested him. And in that vehicle they found an expandable baton. Uh, he's been charged with uh, driving offences and carrying an offensive weapon and barred to a later date. His vehicle was also impounded for 28 days. So uh, I think you'd all agree that in that uh, five-hour period of some appalling driver behaviour um, and we continue to stand here and tell people that you're driving on our roads and acting like this. Um, I'm not sure how we're supposed to get the message through to these people because they might be not only hurting themselves but they're hurting other innocent road users. Uh, case in point, um, you know, up in um, Cully Creek with that motorcycle accident, uh, collision sorry, where uh, an innocent person has been involved in a crash at no fault and has been seriously impacted by that for not just that day but for years to come. Um, so we're here we are at 95 lives lost so far, um, at 60 at the same time last year and uh, 90, 19 motorcyclists included in that um, when it was 13 this time last year. So any questions? Well those drivers who mm. have lost their licence, mm. some of them were already uh, disqualified. That's right. How does this, how does that help or how do we know they're not just going to get back on the road again? Yes, well that's a very good question because we continue to find these types of people driving in our roads and all we can do is keep detecting these people and taking appropriate action as we see fit. Um, but people say they're making mistakes but actually making really poor decisions because they're either selfish or they don't care. So we just have to do what we can as police to pick these people up when they are committing those offences. Do we need harsher penalties here? I think the penalties we have are, are quite harsh um, and I think that we can only apply them as, as an enforcement agency uh, when we detect these people doing those things. I mean, and what's the... Co what? Can we just go back to what you said about Cuddly Creek? Do you mean a crash on um, Sunday with Fitz? Yeah. So what were the circumstances surrounding that collision? So we've got a motorcycle that uh, goes on the incorrect side of the road um, and a person just driving on that road or to the speed limit and gets hit by a motorcycle um, at no fault of their own. Um, and now that person in their car is seriously affected by that crash. And the motorcyclist was killed? It was killed, yes. Okay. What is the correlation between drink and drug driving and fatalities on the road? You're talking about statistics? Or mm. 
Um, certainly part of the Fatal Five, you know, drinking and drug driving is certainly one of our target areas. Um, it continues to be a problem. I mean, the, uh, the name of those two incidents I've just spoken about, one was a drug-related incident and the other one was a drink-related incident as well. So it's pretty evident that people continue to do it. Um, and all we can do is continue to put the message out there that you shouldn't be doing that. But uh, as I said before, um, people continue to do these things because they, either they don't care or they're just selfish. How lucky were we that no one was, I guess, seriously injured or killed last night? Because these are the exact behaviours that mm. lead to those things. Yes, extremely lucky um, that no one was seriously injured, um, particularly in the, with the Mustang on its roof and uh, you know the motorists just minding their own business getting crashed into. Uh, we're very fortunate that no one was killed in that particular incident. So are there any legislative reviews or changes that you're looking at in the area of road safety? I think a part of that review is ongoing with us in the Department of Transport. We're always looking at ways to um, improve things. Um, and, and I think that the suite of laws we've got at the moment is quite strong as far as being able to enforce things like impounding a vehicle um, and then you know, putting in application of the court to either have that uh, car you know, on sold or crushed as yep. we've done in the past. Sorry. Yep. Is it fair to other drivers on this road saying that motorcyclist, that list of everything that he's done wrong, mm -hmm. he's able to just walk down, you know, walk down the street and go, he could get in another car, he could get on another motorbike. Is that fair to the other road users that these people can just go back out there? I think uh, the people who investigate those particular incidents make uh, informed decisions at the time whether they're going to report or arrest. Um, and sometimes those criteria don't exist, but I do understand the question, but we have taken away his mode of transport and his licence. So I think there are two affirmative actions in that particular occasion. Yeah. Is, it, is police powers enough to take someone's licence away for six months or 12 months? Is that how it works? And, yes, yes. And then a magistrate can um, shorten that or lengthen that? So once you've done that instant loss of licence for that individual and then they appear for the court, then that will be a matter for the court to decide what happens post that. And I mean, what, 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 are there any measures that you're looking at or any solutions you're looking at to curb the road toll? I think we're taking positive steps, you know, uh, with our high visibility, um, we're doing print drug drive stops, um, we have safe speed in the hills, all that sort of thing. We have Operation Vulnerable to do with, you know, dangerous driving, all those sorts of things. We're doing what we can in that. It, it, also education as well, but also the enforcement side of it. Um, and if you come to our attention, taking that affirmative action against those people. Did the motorcyclist at Cuddly Creek have drugs or alcohol in the system? I'm not aware of that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.